Hello, my name is Rudy Cortez and welcome to this TD Colleges Tech Byte. During this week, we're going to look into a very, very simple introduction to RenderMan. And uh, the reason for this is because uh, while working in the industry, I've met and worked with a lot of people that um, they always want to learn RenderMan. They either use it, you know, through Maya or in their uh, studio. Uh, they already use it, but they don't really know what's going on underneath the, uh, underneath the covers. So a lot of times they want to learn what's going on, uh, but they don't know where to start. Uh, a lot of times they think they have to go out and buy Pixar's RenderMan, which is very pricey. It's great software, but it's kind of pricey for someone who just want to learn. And the truth is that you don't need to buy this kind of software. All the necessary software to learn how to use RenderMan is free and available on the Internet. Uh, so let's uh, take a look at how we can start learning. Uh, one of the first places I like to go to is uh, this little website. It's called uh, 3dlight.com. Uh, this company produces a RenderMan compliant renderer called 3D Light, which allows you to have uh, a single license for free. And this is unlimited. You can render to unlimited resolutions, but they allow you to render for free with that license. And this is a very good renderer. Uh, another renderer you could use, its name is Axis, and it's available at axis.org. And um, this is an open source project. So the cool thing about this is that you can look at the source code of how a renderer can be put together. To most people, this might not be too interesting. But for those of you who know C++ and C programming, it might be interesting to look at this. Uh, these two renderers are free. For this example, we're going to be using 3 Lite, So you can always go to the 3 Lite page, find the download section, and then download, install, make sure you license it. Uh, all the documentation is on their page and then you can get started. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, let's look at a file that we can render. Uh, in RenderMan, usually you're going to be rendering files that end up with, uh, with the rib extension. For example, here we have a file called hello world.rib. And uh, this is what our file contains. That's all the stuff it, that is in there. So some of these commands we would expand over in a class. But for the time being, let's just go over them really quick. Uh, most important ones, display. You're telling the renderer what kind of image uh, you want to create. On this point, we're telling it uh, we want to create an image named hello world.tiff. Then we tell it that we want to send it to a frame buffer, which is just a frame window, uh, and that we want an RGB format. Here, you could also add an A at the end if you wanted an alpha. Next, uh, we tell it the format of the image, 500 pixels by 500, uh, with a pixel aspect ratio of 1 how many samples per pixel, the clipping planes for the camera, the near would be this, and the far would be this one, um, what kind of projection you want to use, uh, and we're going to use a perspective projection with a default value, which I believe is 35 degrees. The next thing on the rib file is a translate command, which basically just pushes the camera back by, uh, by 1.5 units. Then we define our world begin. So we are telling the renderer, we're going to start rendering now. And these are the objects that are going to live inside the world. Uh, inside world begin, usually the first things that you define is your lights. Because a rib file is always parsed from top to bottom. So you need to define your lights before you define any geometry. So the first thing you usually find on rib files uh, after world begin is uh, some transformation sometimes, but then a light source. So here we have a distant light, which is a light that only has uh, orientation, that's why we have this from part right here, uh, an intensity, and then we have an ambient light, which has an intensity of 0 0.1. These names right here are actually names of pre-compiled shaders, and this is something we would expand more uh, in a more formal course. Um, once the lights are defined, we go into an attribute block, and inside that attribute block, we define some attributes for the object that we want to render. Um, the most important at this point is uh, the surface, shader that we want to use. And the name of the surface shader is called s underscore hello world. Then we rotate the object a little bit. And then we tell it that what we want to generate is a sphere, which has the following information. And the commands for a sphere, we could go over a little bit later. But for the time being, this is the command that will allow you to generate uh, a sphere on the screen. Then you close down the attribute block, that which began over here. So from here to here, is where you define your sphere. And then you just go to uh, a world end. 
So this is the whole file that you need to be able to render a sphere. And as you can see right now, it's 25 lines. And that's because we have a lot of empty lines. Um, so to be able to use RenderMan, you don't need a fancy application to be able to export. You could just use the render and a text editor, and you're able to go. Now that our rib file is ready, we can move over and try to uh, render this file. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring up a couple of command prompts and uh, navigate to the place where we saved this file. In this instance, this file is called hello world.rib, and it was saved under this directory. So we just you know used our regular uh, shell commands to navigate there. Um, so right now we're going to go run uh, our rendering command, and the 3D light document documentation tells us that the command to render is called render dl, and then you give it the name of the file that you want to render. So in this call, it's called hello world.rib. If you just click enter right now, it should tell you that it cannot find the shader hello world uh, s underscore hello world which is the shader that if you remember properly we're trying to use over here well this is an expected error because we haven't quite compiled or created this shader yet so I'm gonna go ahead and close this um, and since uh, as you can see here I have two different shell windows and just to keep clear things clear I usually change the title of each one of these windows so this one's gonna be render so the title has changed and this one is going to be compile. So I know what I'm doing on each one of these windows. It's not that important, actually, but it's just a little trick. Um, the next thing I we're going to do now is uh, write our shader. So let's move over over here. And this right here is what we call a hello world shader in RenderMan, uh, which basically you define that what you want to write is a surface shader. Then you give it a name. Our name is s underscore hello world with uh, two brackets and usually between these parentheses is where you would add um, parameters for your shaders that um, final shader users can, could uh, use to modify the look of the shader. Uh, since this is a hello world shader which means it's a bare bone shader we're not going to add any parameters. Then we use a couple of curly brackets and in there we tell RenderMan that the opacity output which is represented by the uh, by the letters o, capital O small i is going to be equal to the input opacity that's defined inside the rib file and then that the color output is going to be equal to the opacity times the color provided by the rib file so this will give you a pre-multiplied alpha now, this file we're going to go ahead and save it as s underscore hello world dot sl and then we can go to where that file is which is in this directory and just type the compiling shader which for 3D light is shader dl and then give it the name of the file so s hello world dot sl and then you click enter and that compiles your shader so now if we go down to render and try to render the image again we should get no errors you can see over here and a sphere that is solid white and that is usually uh, what a hello world shader will give uh, one of the reasons why this is white is because if we go back to our rib and we can look here that uh, on top of the surface there's no color attribute. So the default color attribute, the default color attribute for every element in RenderMan is usually white. If we go over here and we tell it color and uh, we div give it a different color such as 1, 1 and 0, we save this file. Let's move this out of the way and then we try to launch another render. It should give us a yellow.